confusion and, and made a lot of mistakes. Is that going to be one area that the noble lord will be looking at specifically for regulation? Uh, that is an area, of course, that comes under several other uh, parts of regulation already. It's also an area where there are massive changes in the way these models perform. So that if one looks at uh, GPT-4 versus GPT-3, I know it's not facial recognition, but it gives an indication of the types of advances. It's about twice as good now as it was a year ago. And so I think these things are moving fast, and there is indeed a need to understand exactly how facial recognition technology is valid and where it's as problems in recognition well at least he said valid if it's valid or not one area of AI technology that's been used a lot so basically you know I my, I don't like the whole um, impact of all these technologies on the human character and spirit the kind of spiritual and moral implications to a government whose objectives are mainly data objectives, um, you know, n numbers. It's, it's basically a numbers game. They want to track um, persons' positions, locations, travel, gather data, just like the social media companies are doing. The government basically, you know, if they admit the truth, and don't evade facts. I think that the truth would be that the government want to know to be able to have the location of pretty much any person at any given time in the country, possibly even the world. They want that ability, and they're going to have that ability. And when the, that technical ability... Um, well, they've already got that technical ability now with GPS on phones, so let's not fool anyone. Um, whether they can officially say, okay, here's the government central, um, you know, MI5 um, headquarters, and we are using that now, uh, accessing it, right? You know, this is this is the thing. Um, pretty much everything that... Um, they've got everything that they wanted now, Right, and it's just not being acknowledged as being used, in my opinion. I don't think they're acknowledging that they're using it for um, what they want to admit. Um, you know, all this tech is now there, it's in social media, and all they need to do is say, Well, you know, the social media is the government, and the government can use it for government purposes, which is what they're trying to do now. The term digital ID card is, in my opinion, the House of Lords needs to act, admit that the mobile phone is a digital ID. There's no doubt about it. It's a digital identity of a person on a slim card-shaped device. Um, why pretend and argue with the citizens, debate back and forward about these digital ID cards and digital id when we, everyone's carrying it around with them now and we've got it it's pretty much who you are what you are what you like what you don't like um, everything you've purchased on your phone the phone is a digital id card everyone's got one stop playing games and distractions with you know tony blair's you know oh, well you know well you've got to have you know your passport or this or that to go vote most people walk into a polling station with a phone in the pocket anyway uh, why play charades why um play you know th 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 we're being um you know dumbed down you know the phone is the dream of the government for digital identity and they've got us to like love cherish cherish and adore it as a entertainment piece when it's a pretty damn serious citizens um identity piece full of information of an individual that's not just entertainment value um whatsoever you know why use these other terms and other red herring um de debates and arguments what they're doing is their mechanisms of implementation which tony blair's favorite phrase is they've used mechanisms of implementation through their partnerships with the big platforms and developers and tech like Sir Nick Clegg is working in Facebook 
and everything that they're wanting is falling into place and has fallen into place. This front, this pretend debate or argument, oh, should we have digital ID or not? It's insulting to intelligence. It's insulting to individuals. It's insulting to citizens. It's more or less having a theatre, a pretend theatre, um, pretending that we're arguing about certain things which they've already locked into place, solid and backed up and are now starting to become entrenched in our behaviour uh, and, and becoming customary, get people getting used to them, uh, having them and using them, when a lot of these you know, machines actually are giving radiations and things off um, and, and could be harmful if, if, if you keep them in your pockets. And then also there's the other impact of it, the spiritual impact. Religion has always sought primarily to, you know, control behaviours or to affect behaviours of people for better behaviours. When human beings conduct themselves, when they know they're being filmed, most human beings act differently if they know they've been recorded or filmed. Some, so it, it's Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has a phrase which um, resonates with me that you know, always from a child, you always believe that you know you're a witness to God, so you always behave good because you know of God. But you you don't have to; it's not forced, and you know you try not to cheat anyone or steal anything or behave badly because you know you, you for your conscience for for your moral conscience. A lot of the people who do break the law or lie, cheat or steal, um, you know, usually think that people don't know about it or they can get away with it. Um, not everyone's like that. But there is a point, I think, that if the nation becomes a stage show, a theatre, whose benefit is it for? Is it for everyone's benefit? You know, is everyone bowing and curtsying for each other's benefit? Um, and is everyone, you know, saying please and thank you just so they can have a nice day and, you know, be pleasant? Um, it, 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 in, in the 1950s or 1920s, if, if you walk past people and smile and say hello, um, you usually do it because you want to, not because you have to, you know. Um to make everyone's daily life experience more pleasant um, because it's a good thing to do, not because you have to, though. Some people are in a bad mood or upset, you know, and, and you know, they, they might not feel like doing all that. One, you know, not every, there are, there's a certain percentage of the whole nation that now, you know, the phone's listening to them. We need to acknowledge that Google... Facebook, YouTube are now using psychology honours and the House of Lords need to admit that and they're doing it in a coy and novel, humorous way but through the guise of advertisements and entertainment where they're using what is extremely advanced high-tech surveillance which any government would be over the moon with having and they're presenting it as um, advertising, commercial advertising, to help you look for things that you might want to buy or look at, when that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, um, governments on, you know, governments, um, security services w would have only dreamed of that, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And now... It's been wielded and thrown around by organisations and companies pretending that, oh, we're just here to make entertainment and videos for you and sell products. When there is very, there are very key people like Sir um, Nick Clegg and other key people like Emma Arbuthnot and her husband and all this, you know, security surveillance connection with the courts and so forth, where it, it, it's... It, 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 it's a very pertinent thing to the nation that this is spying 
effectively. It's spying on citizens. It's spying on citizens and their private lives and gathering information about their plans. What are they planning to do? Right? But, you know, is that, you know, in, if the government say, look, you know, we've got this tech, the so currently it's being posed as being constrained within entertainment and business sector. I wouldn't trust any businessman to have that amount of information about me and what I'm planning to do. Who is it going to be convenient for? Is it going to be convenient for the running of the airlines and airports and boats and ships because they can predict where everyone might want to go on holiday or is planning to go on holiday or could go on holiday so we can orchestrate travel better? But then they're, they're, they're the ones who are influencing you, saying, popping holiday pictures up, suggestions of where there is to go on holiday or where you might want to go, or persuading you that, you know, maybe you don't want to go to, um, you know, the desert in Africa or somewhere, or if you don't want to go to Gobligate Tepe, Tepe or wherever, you know, maybe you, you know, trying to persuade people to go more on um, Ibiza style um, party, you know, leisure holidays rather than. You know, more academic people might want to go see something um, where they want to learn about something about another part of the world, you know, see some ancient sites or cultures or archaeological interest sites or whatever. Uh, they, they've always done that through, you know, duty free, you know, they've always had, they've used television programs like Alvida's Impet, duty free programs like that to, to sell and advertise holidays where you're pretty much going on a consumer trip to buy coca-cola overseas and ice creams overseas uh literally you know with the temperature turned up a little bit higher and sometimes those oceans aren't even that much cleaner than ours um in the mediterranean you know they might look cleaner but they're not necessarily cleaner you know i've seen rubbish floating around in them um when i was there so you know it's almost like Rishi Sunak's um, temperature... Con oh, like, turn the temperature up a couple of degrees, you know, and get the sun out, you know. It, it, it It's herding the citizens away from education and putting them towards making money for... You know, they're herding people through duty-free in the airports. It's just... Th there's no aspiration. It's this all kind of like private school education versus working class education. Again, I think it's, it's insult from the start. Rather than getting people interested in um, more academic subjects, rather than, you know, just being interested in, you know, I'm down at the pub having a few pints in England or I'm doing it overseas, you know. It, it you know... <laughs> You, you you might as well blame we might as well blame all of the enterprises for the people's patterns. And now now all these companies are the ones who are getting all this information on us, but but definitely at the moment planning to use it to sell more products. Half of these products have been harming us and causing unhealthy effects, which has been a waste of resources, a waste of labour. And, but they've profited out of it all. It's scandalous. And, and some people have tried to resist it. Other people just dive straight into it. And all the television shows as well, just, just directing this whole... The whole, you know, okay, I mean, if you use the Colosseum in Rome as a model to where we are now with the O2 Arena or even studio audiences... That whole model is just, you know, you've got your, you know, even when they have different guests, you know, everyone can have their turn stood next to Philip Schofield or whatever it is, you know, Simon Cowell, everyone can have their turn singing. But the, the whole model of this congregation with, with, you know, your presenters at the front and everyone else is facing forward, not even facing each other, all those people, I mean... A hundred people in a studio audience who aren't even facing each other and talking to each other. They're not even looking into each other's faces for expressions and reactions to when someone does a joke or a comedy sketch on stage or acts. They, they, I mean, you might just turn your head to the side briefly or whatever, but it, 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 it's actually all that effort, all the people driving there 
And the whole model of it is just ridiculous. You can't even really see them that well, you know, when you're sat in an audience of 100 people when they're at the front. It, 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 it's, but to be able to get people to do that, I mean, I, I, you know, you go to the cinema, but then they're stuffing all that food in you. We, we go into these subjects when we talk about these things, but this is the thing. We're talking about humans moving about in the public arena, in the public forum, going to places and being scanned with their faces because they want to know where everyone is and, and where they're going and what they're doing. But why suddenly don't they trust these people? The majority of crime has been confessed by the police's statistics to be mainly through this immigration problem and ethnic groups, which that, that's what the figures show, which they admitted, you know. Therefore, it seems to me I, it's just so unfair on this country that the resolution and the solution is that we need to use high-tech spyware on the citizens because of the majority of crimes, the highest frequency and number of crimes are all these certain criteria of crimes which are from, um, you know, immigration issues, or at least that area of issues. A lot of the scams on the internet are coming from foreign countries, whether it's, you know, um, the Middle East or Africa or, um, you know, Singapore, places like that a lot of the scams online, there's less people in this country scamming people of this country than there is people overseas scamming people in this country. It, it, it's just a mess. I, I actually don't think that the, the big companies that have got all the money now, I don't really think that they care about the people anymore. I think that um, they're just living their lives, you know, and, and they're in, they are in another class. And I don't even think that, I mean, at least this is the House of Lords, right? And they're debating it. The House of Lords' as, as job is meant to be to govern the country and care about how the country's run. All years and years and years and years of hazards, which are intricately um, filled with dialogue about um, care for the country, better government of the country, for more convenience of running of the country and for the for the citizens, some of those hazards um, announcements and discussions are charades games. You know when they've got hidden motives and agendas when they might put the frontage on there to to be pleasant or care or not. But this is the thing. I, it, f from what was said in this video, I think that the security services themselves like the tech and want more of it, and I think that. You know, how, what is it to be a citizen and what is it to be an individual and a human? And and what is the, you know, behaviour that you enjoy from being a citizen and from other citizens? What I'm finding now is that already just from the social media having it on their mobile phones, the attitude of... um people is just changed so much that, that they're not very trusting of people it's not um welcoming or friendly as much anymore um you know people don't want to laugh at things and um it, it, it's the, the culture of the country is being changed and the nature of the citizens and when it's all in front of cameras and recording it, it is almost like being directed it, it, it's not i mean what is freedom in nature okay you've got predators if you're in the woods you know not all countries have dangerous predators maybe sometimes you're a predator if you know in america they like to go shooting right but even if you, you have a religion and even if you believe, you know, the world is conscious or whatever, if you're out in the woods and you don't have a mobile phone with you, you know, and you're not, you know, paranoid that there is some microchip in some corner of your shoe or boot or whatever, right, you act and behave a certain way as a natural being in an environment. 
you're not putting on a show for anyone. You're not putting on a display for anyone else. Once, you know, actors on TV do that, they're, they're given a script, they're told what to say, they're told what not to say, you know, even their movements, and, and then the set's put there for them, paid for them, and designed by a certain person. And that's really what's happening now around us with all these corporate companies taking over and people not being able to object to it and then even corroding more at the right to object. And even at the the the, the style of the place and, and the... Um, everything and, and it's been sold through advertisements you know you, you know everything's been changed mainly for a profit if it, if a profits weren't being made out of it then they wouldn't be doing it as much and if if people didn't have to do it for a work to earn a living then they wouldn't be doing it as much and and you know there's definitely another production of a lot of things going on at the moment it, it it's and those big companies, to sustain themselves, have needed to do more and more business, and you know, or else they'll go bust because they, they can't hold themselves up. They'll collapse if they're not continuing to um, make more and more money. So it, it all seems that it's for you know, and, and what they're going to be directing themselves to do. Um, it, 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 we're going to end up with. We're already going towards a very kind of um, character dulled society where the behaviour is very analog and constrained to the to the point where I mean. You you don't want clones, you know. It, it, it's it's all right for a lot of immigrants to say, "Oh, we don't want to be insulted in England." You know, we don't want to be, you know, people being obnoxious or rude or whatever. But why do people make plays out of these things? Why do they spend this amount of money on movies? To get actors to act with these extravagant or extreme caricatures right even though it's scripted whereas for us it seems the opposite we're going to all it, it it will end up like we're all some kind of um neutralized analog um beings who can only go to a, a film to watch these actors um perform these extravagant characters who, you know, uh, but, but but because it's only acting and not real, they're allowed to be rude. They're allowed to tell jokes. They're allowed to be humorous or whatever um, because we're not allowed to do it because it might offend someone. So it, it, it and, and that's what it was like with all the action, you know, um, all these action heroes saving the day because, you know, it's too dangerous to do in real life, although, you know, people were bloody doing it when... Um, the peasants were joining in um, with, you know, um, Harold Godwinson. So it, it, it's, it's almost like we are, we are being pressured and coerced through spyware and it, we're being made into a, a permanent film or movie where you've got to follow a script, which is the law, which is becoming even more restrictive so we end up being completely and totally uh, in a very bland and boring script where we've got to do it or we'll be punished yet we're we're, we're going to movies and tv um you know, we're watching television and movies where you know they're being given you know, you know, you know, here's a saucy script because it's pretend um, they're allowed to do it. But isn't you know? Aren't we pretend? Aren't we pretending to be? We're the ones who are pretending now. We've got to pretend to you know. You know, we've got to pretend. Oh no, it, it, it's there's definitely some. There's some very severe contradictions going on here. And this is the problem with Kamala Harris. You know, she's, she's seen banning all these certain things from social media. When she, she The first place you should ban them from is the movies. 
right? Because they're the, they're the ones who are influencing people. They've got no intention of doing that. And a lot of the movies is just spam now. My phone's filled with spam. P people are just... What these phones have enabled to do is sometimes you have a memory and you remember something and it's brilliant if you want to take a photograph of it or get a painting, fair enough. But you've got... Every, different, every day is a new experience. Even if people like doing the same thing every day. Now, a lot of this tech is just actually junk. We got junk food. There are junk programs. There are, now on YouTube, they're, they're coming up with all these new fancy scrolling things on the videos and the apps, which actually is a pain. They're not actually any better, I don't think. Yet, you know, YouTube are just... It, 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 they're just messing around with it all. You know, and I think ultimately, if you follow this model, which I've just kind of roughly set out, which I do think is correct, generally speaking, it, it, there is a general direction of that. You, you know what you're going to end up with if you if they continue with us, every single aspect of your behaviour being filmed and monitored with the tech and, and you know, this ultimate behaviour imposed, which is really what, you know, the, the ultimate dream of some of these politicians, you are actually going to end up with, right, literally with the student, you know, it's going to be like, you're just going to be sat, average citizens are just going to be like a studio like someone sat in a cinema um, audience, just sat there, not looking at each other, not talking to each other, just the odd comment, you know, to each other, if we're permitted, if we're allowed, um, you know, and, and then, you know, oh, oh, when they say we can all clap and applaud, then, you know, we'll all get a little bit excited and kind of clap and applaud as long as it doesn't offend anyone, right? And then these authorised persons um, at the front, the these stars, they can, you know... Um, perform they can do all these contortions of caricature you know evil good um angry fierce or whatever on stage because they're given the script and it's pretend and not real but then what's pretend and not real is the fact that you know we're all just being li literally diluted down into these lifeless spiritless beings who, who who cannot you know um express these um human caricatures i'm not saying that everyone needs to be a religious fanatic or go around rampaging everywhere but it is the way that it's going that is generally the way that they're pushing it and i i think that um you know i mean what there's not much difference is there to be uh, one of jeff bezos's um workforce with, with you know jeff um and his um vip team you know um, running the show and everyone else just, you know, performing the bland, mundane, daily um, processes uh, than just being sat in, a, in an audience, you know, with the odd... And, and even sometimes they're even doing fake applause, you know? It, it, that's the way that it's going. If, if they carry on going in that direction, that's the way it's going. And that is... That, that is it, 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 it's almost slavery in a way. I mean, and then what is there to surveil? What is left to surveil, right? If, if everyone is kind of turned into a machine part that must be in the right place at the right time, that must um, be running to the clockwork, then what you're actually doing is you're looking for, just like Jeff Bezos, you know, you know, you, you, you made a mistake, you did something wrong, or it, 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 it's... Surely that has got to be that I, you know, they're wanting some kind of fake grace, effectively. But in, to, to whose grace? To whose grace is it, you know? And I think at the moment, you know, that Moby Cartoon's a good example, you know. Pe people at the moment seem to be feeling like that... Um, you know, again, we have to give examples, you know, that that, that cartoon that Moby did, you know, when um, pe people are trying to 
get some kind of attention, but everyone's in this kind of like um, new work culture. <sighs> it's miserable even thinking about it. We're not even speaking to people hardly anymore. I'm just like talking to a phone. I mean, he, he, he. and this is why you know people's conversational skills are suffering because they're typing on keyboards and they're not actually speaking to real people to a face. Is people aren't even speak? You know, it's facial recognition. We aren't actually interacting with humans so much anymore. People aren't going out, they're just going on their phones or devices. And then... 